Okay, so people who don't read manga or watch anime seem to have a skewed view of it. Like, they think it's just nothing but zany comedy and ludicrous, crazy, over-the-top action and nonsensical storylines that are just weird. And they're not totally wrong, is the thing. Like, yes, a lot of anime are like that, but it is also just a broad medium. You know, you have everything from lighthearted comedies to super dark and serious series. You have action, you have romance. Like, you have a lot of different stuff in there. So, while, yeah, they, they're kind of correct, it's not a fair assessment of things. And, um, Madaka Box is basically what people who don't read manga think manga is like. It's fun, but it's also just nuts. And really, really stupid sometimes. But mostly it's nuts. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. I have no idea what genre I would classify Madaka Box as, to be totally frank. Like, it, it starts off as <coughs> more of a comedy and school life story with some action elements because it takes place at like a very strange school where people are just strong enough to break through concrete with their bare hands sometimes and j just things like that are, are a common occurrence here. But after a while it turns into like a full-on shonen battle series like in the vein of you know Dragon Ball Z or Naruto or Bleach or something like that. The series does not have much of an overarching plot, uh, rather it's split into a bunch of smaller arcs which don't tie into each other all that much, to be totally honest, but it's basically like it falls into the Dragon Ball Z trap of just going, and then a stronger enemy appears, and then they defeat that one, and then a stronger enemy appears, and then they defeat that one, which is eh, very unfortunate. However, it's a pretty short series overall, it's actually less than 200 chapters, so it manages to not uh, get too annoying with that trap. Like, if it had gone on longer, like if something like uh, Naruto is around 700 chapters, if it had gone on that long, then yeah, this would have gotten really stupid and I probably would not have finished it, but it manages to not outstay its welcome. And also, considering how short it is, a lot happens in that short amount of time. Like, again, they have a lot of different story arcs, which aren't all super deep and complex, but you know, they have a lot of them. They have a lot of different characters who, while they aren't necessarily the best, pretty much all of them do have some personality or at least some quirk about them that makes me remember who they are looking back on it, which is not very easy to do. And the world does expand continually up until the final arc. Like, it just gets bigger and bigger. And I don't, I don't just mean, uh, like, they discover new locations and new places. Like, uh, something like One Piece is very good at that, where they're just constantly going from one place to another and all these different uh, islands they hop on are very different from one another, and that's great, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's also just very, very difficult to continually expand a world like that. Like, uh, let's say Naruto, for another example, uh, by the time you're like a third of the way through that series, you've pretty much seen everything the world has to offer, and after that it's really just about the characters and the story and the action. You know, you don't really discover any new uh, cultures or countries that are important that we need to know about, and you don't really discover anything new about like the magic system or anything like that. Whereas Madaka Box, even though they don't uh, show off a whole bunch of the world, uh, you do discover more about well, I guess calling it the magic system is like the closest thing for it. Uh, it's kind of like in Mistborn, if you've ever read that, where at first you learn about allomancy and you're like, okay, this is how the magic in this world works, that's really neat. But then later you also learn about firukemi, which is a completely different type of magic, uh, and you, they realize, oh, okay, that, that expands the world a little bit, it makes it a little deeper, a little richer, and uh, it adds different uh, it dimensions to a lot of different things, including like society and warfare and all that. And then you also learn about hemallergy later on, and you're like, oh wow, there's three different types of magic here. And Madaka Box does something kind of similar to that. Overall, I do want to reiterate that I do think Madaka Box is a good series. Uh, like it is, again, a shonen battle manga, so if you don't like those, this isn't going to change your mind. But if you do like it, I think it's fun. It's just really, really goddamn stupid. And uh, from here on out, there will be spoilers, so if you want to 
check out the series for yourself at all, then go ahead and check it out. Uh, don't, don't check out the anime, because the anime, one, only covers, like, the first two story arcs, and two, it's just not that good in general. But anyways, uh, if you don't want spoilers, then leave now. It's just that the Book of Mormon says a lot of strange stuff, like that Adam and Eve lived in Jackson County, Missouri. So what is this story about? At the beginning, uh, we're introduced to Madaka Kurakami, who is a girl who is elected her high school class president with 98% of the vote, and she makes a suggestion box, as which is part of her platform while she was running, and she says, hey, if you have any problems or anything, put it in this box and I will do my best to help you, and that's where the title of the series comes from. Now, Badaka is just perfect in every way. You know, she's a star athlete, she's uh, the best fighter ever, she's an amazing pupil who gets perfect grades and everything. Like, she's an, a, a musician at one point, they show off. Like, she's just the best at everything she ever tries. She's perfect, she's a genius in every way. And this is acknowledged by characters in the story, is the thing. Like, they acknowledge, yep, she is a perfect genius in every way, and some people envy her for that, some people are je jealous of her, or want to take her down a peg, or anything like that, but it is acknowledged by characters in the story, and so at first it seems almost like a deconstruction of this type of character, uh, <clears throat> almost, spe again, specifically, like a shonen battle protagonist who is just the best fighter ever, and they may not be good at other things, but that doesn't really affect the story, so it doesn't matter, and they're just the best at everything they need to be the best at in order to win the day, and it seems kind of like a deconstruction of that, because it shows how it's isolating for Madaka, and how she basically only got this way because of eugenics. Uh, trust me, we're not going into that. But it, it seems like that, but then after a while they just kind of give up on it, and Madaka is just a perfect protagonist. Or, more accurately, I shouldn't refer to Madaka as the protagonist, because the real protagonist is Zenkichi, who is her friend, and he is a pretty normal dude for the most part. He just is also in love with Madaka, which the story again kind of abandons partway through and they don't really do anything with that. Uh, but he becomes like a great fighter and everything because he just trained really hard. Like he really wanted to be as good as Madaka. He wanted to keep up with her and all that, which is kind of neat, but... Uh, I don't know if they really go anywhere super unique or super cool with that. He's just a more likable character because he has to suffer and struggle. Beyond that, there's not a lot to him, uh, you know, like, there's just... His mom is introduced and actually plays a fairly big role in the story, which surprised me, but it doesn't mean that much. Uh, I mean, when they first introduce his mom, she literally looks like a 10 or 12 year old girl, so people think, think that she's his sister, but then he says, oh, hi mom, and everyone's surprised, which... Like, yeah, this, this woman who's, like, 40 years old just looks 10 or 12 years old, and that probably says something about Zenkichi's father, but let's just move on past that. So the early series is about Zenkichi and Madaka just going around school fixing their problems, you know, and also, like, gaining more people to join up with the student council because no one else is voted in, it's just the president is voted in. I don't know, man, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, and they actually run the school, but then there's also, like, this other group of people who function as kind of a balancing act for the student council. Look, it's dumb and we cannot get into everything, but the early series is just about them going around and solving problems. And then the second arc introduces this this type of yeah, these type of people called abnormals, which Madaka is an abnormal, and they're basically just mutants with superpowers. You know, they they have crazy powers. Like again, they're all like super strong and fast the same way as Madaka and I mean, again, Zenkichi is able to train up to that level just by lifting weights and stuff, so I don't know if they're that special for that regard, but whatever. Uh, and then they also have, like, super healing, and then there's one guy who can send out electrical signals with his mind, and he can use that to control people, and he can also use it to steal their powers for himself because anime logic. And basically, Madaka and them discover that there's a secret class at their school called Class 13, uh, again, this whole series takes place at a high school. I just, I want to reiterate that. Uh, and Class 13 is full of abnormals, and it's like a hidden underground base at their school, which they have to infiltrate. And this is a pretty standard arc, you know, like, the, the hidden base is full of bad guys. The heroes have to go through and fight them one at a time. And uh, there are some pretty good fights in this series, I'll say that too. Uh, you know, it's not entirely just, I punch the other guy harder than he can punch me. Like, there is some strategy to it, uh, and... 
well, nah, that, that's about all I have to say. Like, it, there is some strategy to it, and that elevates it beyond a lot of it, its contemporaries. And like I said, Madaka's friends are not abnormals, so they can mostly just fight through the power of hard work, and they also become really good partially because Madaka has an older brother who really wants to fuck her, and he's really good at training people. Like, he himself is not super good at fighting or anything because while he was undergoing some experimentations, because he's also an abnormal, he had a bunch of his organs removed and everything, but he's, his mind is still sharp as attack, and so he can use that to train Zenkichi and Madaka and them, and then they can, like, break through concrete without using magic or anything. So near the end of this arc, they get into the situation where they're about to go to the final room and confront the big bad guy of the whole arc, and they just open an elevator and, oh shit, there's like six other dudes there, we're in trouble, how are we gonna fight past them? And then uh, a bunch of their friends who they've made uh, earlier on in the series come in and say, hey, we'll fight them for you, you go on. And then they start, you know, fighting, and then we just don't cut back to them for quite a while, and Madaka goes and defeats the bad guy, and then when they finally go back up, they find everybody on both sides of that battle dead and crucified against the wall. <gasps> and then a stronger enemy appears. Like I said, that's kind of all this series can do after a while. But in this case, it works really well, because when they introduce the new guy, Kumagawa, this is a hell of an entrance. You know, like, there's this uh, thing, in wrestling it's called jobbing, and on TV tropes it's called the wharf effect, but basically it's this idea where, in order to show off how powerful a new character is, usually a new villain, uh, you show them defeat and a character who's already established as being super strong, and then you're immediately going, oh wow, uh, how powerful is this guy? And in Kumagawa's case, he is crazy fucking powerful, but he's also the best character in this series. Now, is he super deep and complex? Eh, not really. Like, there's a bit to him, certainly. Like, there's a little bit more beneath the surface, but mostly he's just great because he's so cool, <laughs> you know? And even if, even if after this moment he was a crappy villain and a crappy character and he didn't do all that much of note and he just wasn't that interesting to read about or anything like that, I would still think he was gr a great character just because of this entrance, because that fucking sticks in my mind. I mean, this series ended... Uh, almost 10 years ago, I think. <clears throat> like, I was still in high school when it happened, so it was, it was a while ago, but I still remember this moment clear as day in my mind, because Kumagawa shows up, says, oh, hey, I know you think I crucified all these guys, but I didn't, really. And then they have a brief conversation, and then he shoves a giant screw through his own head, but he survives, and he's very nonchalant about it. And then he goes off, and he's like, oh, by the way, I have a bunch of minions and stuff, and we're gonna fight you because I'm bad, mwahaha. Now, Kumagawa and his crew are what are called minuses, and they are basically abnormals, except they're, like, bad somehow. Yeah, they're, they're not a lot different. Uh, like I said, it's a different type of magic. Like, it's a whole different magic system, essentially, which is kind of interesting, I guess, but it's not really different enough to distinguish itself that much. It's like, okay, abnormals have crazy powers, minuses have crazy powers, except minuses' crazy powers tend to be related to how they are absolutely insane. Like, there's someone who just makes the whole, uh, makes, eh, excuse me, she can make objects and people who come too close to her just rot away, like they're aging super fast. There's another girl who can, uh, reopen all your old wounds that you've had over the years, including mental wounds, which is how Madaka's secret sister, who erased her own memory because she ran away from home, relearns that she's Madaka's sister, and then gives herself powers where she can control ice. Again, I can't explain everything that happens in this series, but it goes really off the rails in a lot of very small ways along the way. And Kumagawa, even without using his powers, is weirdly strong. You know, like, he refers to himself as the weakest person in the world, but because of that, he can instantly identify weaknesses in other people, like blind spots and uh, areas that are more sensitive to attacks and things like that, and he's able to use that to take on crazy good fighters, even like Madaka, and I think, well, that's a really neat way of approaching it, at least. Like, practically speaking, from a story standpoint, it just means, yeah, he's a really good fighter, just like everyone else, but giving a different reasoning for it is still kind of neat. And his actual power, his minus that he has, is referred to as all fiction, and basically that just means he can erase anything from existence. Like, 
when he kills all those people and crucifies them against the wall, he later erases the fact that he killed them and they all come back to life. Or he could erase objects and people from existence. And so it's clear from the very beginning that if he wanted to, he could just snap his fingers and make Madaka and everyone else just disappear and they'd, they'd be gone and he would win. But he doesn't want to just kill them. He wants to break them down and beat them and bring them down to his level. He's kind of like the Joker in The Dark Knight where he wants to prove everyone is just as crazy as him. And so it, he has like a weird sense of honor about it almost. It's, it's weird. Like the only uh, real limitation to all fiction is that he cannot erase the fact that he erased something. So if he erases someone from existence, he can't erase the fact that he erased them and then bring them back. Like, like once something's gone, it's gone for good. And then later on, he also loses his power and then gets it back, but it's a bit weaker. So, but that's because he later becomes a good guy after his arc is over, and they can't just have a good guy that's that powerful running around. And then there's a whole arc of fighting after this, where they, they fight Kumagawa's minions, they fight Kumagawa himself, and eventually he is defeated. Like, he realizes he's wrong, and okay, some people are better than me, but I'm also better than I thought I was this whole time, so, you know, maybe I'm not a total loser. And then he joins up with the student council, because I guess they can just do that, and he becomes one of the people to run the school. And then a stronger enemy appears, because, uh, you, you see, years before this happened, Kumagawa actually had to seal a god away in another dimension so that she couldn't be an evil god on Earth, I guess. And uh, when he became a better person and uh, finally just stopped being a minus, I guess, uh, his powers, like I said, became weaker, and so that evil god is able to bre break out. And her name is like Ajimu Nejimi Namajimu. I don't actually care what her name is, but she, she's what's referred to as a not equal, and <coughs> she's, well, like I said, she's a god. She's trillions of years old, older than the universe itself. Uh, she's watched all the planets get created and humanity come about, and she also has like 14 quadrillion powers. Like, it was uh, 7 trillion, or... Yeah, seven quadrillion and some change abnormalities, and then six trillion and some change minuses. And she can give those power to, powers to people or take them away at will. And at first I thought uh, it was there was going to be some sort of reveal where she's the source of all these powers. Like, when they're born, she might decide to give you one, but then uh, after you die, it returns to her, or something like that. And that winds up not being the case, but I don't know, it would have been kind of interesting. She also breaks the fourth wall a lot and acknowledges that she's in a manga, which is not really played for laughs or anything, it's just her saying, hey, this manga's gone on too long, it's kind of weird, and then no other characters acknowledge that she's saying this. And beyond that, I just I just have no idea what not equals are even supposed to be. Like, I get that it's another magic system, just like abnormals and minuses, but I, I, I don't know what they're supposed to be, and we'd never get a proper explanation, I don't think, so... I don't know, do with that what you will. And again, they have a whole long battle with her <coughs> because, again, she's a god who's kind of evil, but not really, and she it was sealed away in another, in another dimension, but then she comes back and they defeat her, and all of this takes place at one high school. Please remember that. So then we have a brief arc about a bunch of suitors who want to get married to Madaka, and then that's just abandoned really quickly. It's, it's just... It's over, it's done. And then we move on to like the real final arc where we introduce a final villain whose name is Shishime. And for whatever reason, he looks like an ogre or like a kunari from Dragon Age. I don't know why he looks this way. No one else in the series looks this way or looks super inhuman in any other way. He just he just looks like this. I don't know why. Um, and he his main ability is that not only is he super strong and powerful and all that, but Whenever he breaks something, it stays broken forever. Like, if, if he injures someone, then that injury will never heal, no matter how minor it is. Uh, if he breaks a plate or something, then that plate, uh, you can't repair it, no matter what you do. Like, even Kumagawa's all-fiction power cannot erase it. Uh, so, like, th this dude's bad news, and he's evil. Why is he evil? Cause, because he's evil, just for the sake of it. And, you know, they have a whole arc about that. It's not a long one, but him and Madaka eventually fight, and Madaka wins, and the way that she wins is really stupid. Basically, she can't run towards him fast enough in order to hit him hard enough to destroy him, so she, like, runs ahead of herself and then breaks the wind so that she can run faster, which 
I, I know that does not make any sense when I'm explaining it, but it doesn't make any sense in the manga either. I think the mangaka just fucking gave up at this stage. Like, she, she has to run fast, so how does she run fast? She runs faster. It, it's dumb, man. It's really dumb. And then as his final act before he dies, Shishime sets the moon to crash into the earth. I guess he can do that. And then Madaka tells all her friends, hey, run away, I'll take care of this. And they're like, but Madaka, and she's like, just go, I'll take care of this. And then Shishime's ghost appears, because ghosts are a thing in this series now, they've never been mentioned up until now, but like, he, he, ghosts are a thing. Uh, ghosts appear, and then Madaka disappears for a couple of weeks, and then all her friends are like, yeah, we don't know what happened to her, but she's gone. And then she just appears again, and she's like, hey, I destroyed the moon, so it didn't crash into the, the earth. Tengo preguntas. How? How how did you destroy the moon, Madaka? How does that work? What did you do? How exactly did that happen? I don't know. It's never answered or even in, insinuated that there may be an answer. Like, none of the other characters even seem to wonder how she did it. She just destroyed the moon. And then they live happily ever after, I guess. That's just, that's the end of things. So, um... Madaka box, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, just what the fucking fuck? This is a deeply flawed series, uh, but there's no lack of creativity here. <laughs> you know, I'll give it that. Like, both in like the art style, character designs, uh, the types of personalities that they have, the powers they have, like all of that gets crazy creative. And I will give all kinds of uh, praise for that. And hell, it could really inspire other people uh, in their own projects. So. That's great, I hope that works out for them. And, uh, like I said, it is impressive how the world is able to continually expand and continually reveal new aspects to it that makes us look at this world in a different light. Like, a couple of months ago, I did a video about Star Wars and how that franchise has kind of been run into the ground because it has failed to do that, even though it's so much bigger and has run for so much longer than Madaka Box did. Uh, but, you know, I really barely scratched the surface of all the weird shit <laughs> that goes on in this series, but uh, like I said, it is it is fun, and I think you should check it out if anything I mentioned here sounds at all interesting. Anyways, uh, that's it. Uh, see you later. Goodbye. Huge thank you to everyone who watched this far. Uh, I'm sure everyone who's leaving a comment telling me to kill myself uh, definitely made sure to watch the whole video, uh, so thanks to them as well. And all the names you see on screen right now, these are my patrons, so thanks especially to my super ultra great patrons who are Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Evie, Flax, Great Grebo, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Matthew Bodro, Microphone, Peep the Toad, Return of Cardamom, Robbie Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Tesla Shark, Vavixis, Vavictus, and Wesley. I'm not I'm not redoing that. I don't even care. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to get your name on here, be sure to join my patron page. If you can't do that, then Please just rate this video and comment on it, subscribe, all the things I'm supposed to say here. Um, uh, thank, thank you, goodbye.